to bring us back to where we were last time, uh, I had made a template. I was relatively happy with the CSS and the way it looked. Not to say that we couldn't change it, but we went through and did some different things with the CSS. And then I cloned the uh, HTML and made my separate pages. So, right now we have this with our different pages. My page about Tetris, the home page, the history page, different versions and strategy. Now because they're clones of each other, they all look exactly the same. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, little changes in each of them just to, just so that it's clear that they really are different pages, that we're not bringing up the same page each time. And again, notice that um, the nice thing is is that um, we have a consistent look to the site. Um, some students ask me, should you have a link to the page on the page itself? And I say yes for consistency. Uh, you can do that. You can show uh, different pages with style. And in fact, we'll do that right off the bat. So let me go in here, and I'm just going to go in and edit each of these pages. We have four of them, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to edit all four of them, and I'm just going to put some stuff in. I guess my point here is to make four web pages or to make ten web pages or whatever, it's not four times or ten times as long to make one page. You spend your time getting the layout and everything right on one page, you clone it, and then you code what's distinct about that page. So on my home page, I would go and I would say, you know, put uh, an H2 in here and say home. Actually, I'm going to undo. I'm going to put an H2 for home. And I'll go and I'll put one of these H2s on each of the page. Actually, this isn't the home page. This is the versions page. And so I would write about the different versions, maybe show images of the different versions and so on. This is the strategy page. This is the history page. And finally, this is the home page. So I'm going to save them all. And now when we go and open up our home page, this page says home, history, versions, and strategy. So we see we really have different pages. Now, links is one of the last things we didn't do anything about. Uh, links, if you notice, um, they, they, they didn't, uh, they, they, they don't, they haven't taken any of the style rules yet. Links are a little bit different than everything else, all right? So links have their own default style that the browser applies. And the browser applies uh, the, the convention of um, a blue underlined uh, appearance for regular links that you have not visited. If you visited the page, it's sort of magenta and underlines. But we can get, we can change that any way we want to. All right, we could make it not be blue. We could make it um, not be underlined. Um, we can make it different for visited and and so on and so forth. We can do really uh, anything that you you want with the appearance of those. Um, so we're, we're going to play around with this a little bit, um, just to. Uh, just to, again, demonstrate some of the features of CSS and uh, show how that they can apply to links. Now, the nice thing is, is this is changes to the CSS. So I don't have to go and repeat these changes four times. Remember, we want to get our HTML right for the comment sections. Because once we've cloned it, 
then we have multiple copies of it to go back and change if we decide to put something different in the header. If we're changing the CSS, then we're lucky and we only have to change um, the, the code in CSS. So I'm going to start out by saying in my CSS file, close these down, should be everything I do from now will, will be in the CSS file. So I'm going to say nav A. And I can make it be anything I want to. All right. So I'm going to say nav A. Um, let's pick some tetris -y colors. Let's say color green. That'll make the color of the text green. Background. White. Um, font size. 1.2 am will make it a little bigger than it normally should be and font weight will say is bold now how do you remember all these different things how do I know that it's font weight and font size and all that well because I've done them a million times and the ones that I've done a million times I remember things that I've done less frequently I'm at, I'm at not to remember all right so um, having a good resource and having a good way to look uh, up things very quickly is, is a real good idea uh, until you've done things a million times. So W3Schools is a real good resource to use. And there's others as well. You know, I'm not, W3Schools isn't the only one. I can learn uh, CSS and again, I can look at text to see some of the formatting that I can do with text. I can make it a different color. I can align it. I can put a decoration to get rid of the uh, links or to get rid of the underline on the links. I can convert everything to upper text and so on. There's a whole bunch of things that I can do. All right. So I've gone and made this change to make the links green. Let's see if we like it. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right. Now, I'm going to make them look like buttons, and I'm going to do it only with CSS. I'm going to make the display of these guys be inline block. I do that so I can apply some of the things from block tags, some of the, the, the style attributes from block tags. So I'm going to give a width of 100 pixels for each of these. And I'm going to give them a border. of one pixel solid black. All right, so they kind of look like that. Now, I'm going to center it. I'm going to get rid of the underline. So to get rid of the underline, if you remember we saw it a second ago, text decoration. One nice thing about using Notepad++ and other, some other editors like this is they have the IntelliSense. So as soon as, as, as I typed in text dash, it showed me a list of options. So I'm going to get rid of the underline because we're going to make them look like buttons. It's going to be obvious that um, they're a link. And then I'm going to say text align center. And if we look at this, we get that. 
So again, looks like buttons. We can even go and add uh, colors if we want to, uh, to this. Um, I don't know, let's, for the heck of it, we could play around with these. Let's give a background of this to, or of rather, a background of, um, we'll give a light shade of gray, pound sign, DD, DD, DD. -D. Pardon me? I hit the wrong save button. I hit the wrong save button. Okay. two backgrounds in here. Duh. I think I hit this one to save all. There we go. Uh, might not be that apparent. Yeah, you can sort of see that on the screen. Now, we can make it so that if we visited this link, we've changed the appearance of it a little bit. So, what I could do is that I could do this any number of different ways. But I can add what's called a pseudo class to this. And I could say nav a colon visited. Now keep in mind that this only applies to links in the nav section. That's what the nav a means. And what I can do is I can say if it's already visited, maybe we make the text black instead of green. All right. And so now all of them have a black for text because we visited them all. I can do better than that. I can give a mouse over effect. And I can say nav a hover. Actually, I just want this. I just want to change the color to black if it's visited. On the hover, what I could do is I could actually sort of flip the colors and make the background green. And the color of the text, gray. So now when I put my mouse over them, the hover sort of gives a visual indication that this is a link and it can be clicked on. All right. The one thing I mentioned is that I want to be able to uh, make the page that I'm currently on. Uh, this unfortunately is going to require a little change to the HTML, but it's not that big of a change, so we'll do that. What I can do is I can make a current page style in here. I can just say dot current page. And I can make the maybe something different to indicate that this this guy is the current page. So maybe I will make the border bigger. So I made the border bigger on what I'm defining as the current page. Now what I have to do then is I have to go on to each of the pages and edit it and say which page is the current page. But this is a small price to pay, I think, to have this functionality. 
I'm a strong believer that the navigation should be consistent. So even if you're on a page, I think you should have the link to it there. I don't like when the navigation changes. I find that confusing. The other thing that we should do, which I forgot to do, but um, I guess I'll address it now, is to go and change the title. So when I'm on the versions page, I'm going to put a class equals current page. And I'm going to set the title to be versions. When I'm on the strategy page, I'm going to set the strategy link, no I'm not, to current page. And this I'll set as strategy. Where does that class tag go? Yeah, what does it do? Well, it assigns a class of current page to it. And what that means is, if we notice in your style sheet, we have a style rule oh. for current page. So a dot before it means it's a style rule, not an HTML tag. So the, it'll make on any page where we have something defined as a current page, it will make the border different. Yes? Is current page an actual, like, defined role, or is it something like It's something I made up. Okay. So I, I could have called that Fred. All right. It's just that I give it a meaningful name because, um, you know, then I'll know what the purpose of it, what it's used for. Notice the class is an attribute. It's part of this tag. It's additional information. And then this one, history, is that. So I'll save all these, and if I look at it, notice that I'm giving a visual indication of what page they're on. You can tell that they're on the home page because the border looks a little different. I put my mouse over that, 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 that. All right. So without too much work, we made, and we took a very plain site, very basic site, something that you might have done the first week or so of class, and we went and, and made it look um, pretty good. We certainly could do better with this. We could, we could do more stuff with this if we wanted to. Um, maybe make, maybe add a little bit of color to the nav and the footer and, and the header and all that. We could, possibly. Um, but as it stands, it doesn't look bad. All right. It's certainly readable. It's simple enough. It's straightforward. It's clear that this is a navigation. It's clear what, our, what the page is as soon as we get there. And then we have our main content section. So notice that these style things that we're doing are helping the user visually organize the page. Remember how this looked without any style at all. It was just like, boom, there's some data. All right, and you sort of had to poke around and, okay, there's the navigation links, there's this, there's that. Here we're really making the things, making the different sections really stand out. All right, so you can obviously see at a glance how the page is divided into different sections, where the navigation is, and so on. So if you're developing this page, maybe this would be one of your prototypes. All right. I got to show you this neat trick. I think you can still do it in Paint. If not, we'll open it up in some other tool. Let's open up our image. And let's try Paint 3D. eyedropper. If you put the eyedropper here and click, you can't see it. Oh, you used to be able to see what the code was for it. Now they won't let you. So it selects that color, but it doesn't show. Oh, there you go. It shows you what, what the color is. And this is FF, two, this is FF, 
F2, 0, 0. So now that I've sort of used the, the, the eyedropper to pull up a little bit of that color, I go to look at the colors. I get the hex code for that. I can go in and in my CSS file, I can say header background that color of yellow, which I didn't. FFF200. And that matches the color of this to add a little bit of color to it. I could do other things for the green if I wanted to keep consistent. That way, you know, it sort of makes the header stand out even more and it, it sort of gives a theme for the site where it matches the color uh, of the site. Yes? Can you capture that gradual color? The gradient? Yeah, the gradient. You can make a gradient in CSS. Let's look to see how we do a gradient. That's a good question. See, this is one I have to look up because I don't remember how to do this. CSS colors. Do, 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 do. See, these are even more ways to address a color. CSS gradient. Okay. Background. We can do background linear gradient from red to yellow, for example. that we give. We could possibly give multiple prototypes to our user and let them decide. In fact, I wish I would have made that a requirement for your project, that you come up with two prototypes and not just one. Uh, if anyone wanted to do that and come up with two prototypes, there's a really good chance I would be so happy and so giddy to see two prototypes that I would overlook any other mistakes that you made elsewhere in the design. <laughs> there's a chance of that. I'm not saying it would happen, but you never know. Um, it, allows me, it allows you to give people something concrete to look at and to critique. And remember, a prototype doesn't need every page. Like, I made all four of the pages here in my prototype, but, um, you know, I could have gotten by with maybe making a couple of them. All right? Now, again, this isn't complete, um, and, you know, obviously this text is going to be different, but I could go in and maybe flesh out the prototype a little bit, like on the versions I could get a picture of Tetris playing on a Game Boy, for example, and have that, or uh, whatever. And I could sort of flesh out the prototype to make it more meaningful. It's all good, you know, all the documentation you prepare for a website is good, but really, a lot of people have hard times visualizing things just based on descriptions and designs and things like that. That's where a prototype really makes it real form and concrete. So you prepare those other things, they're available to you, they're available to anyone else on the team, but know that the prototype is going to be something that that is probably going to be scrutinized. Now, you're allowed to get any sort of feedback from the prototype, you know, or if you give multiple prototypes. You'll be able to say, I like the colors on this one, I like the background image on that one, I like the font on that one, or whatever. They might not like anything that you do, really, and you kind of have to develop a little bit of a thick skin. 
so that when people criticize it, you realize that they're not criticizing you, they're criticizing a web page. And although it, it's, it's not easy to have someone rip apart something that you've made, at the very least you're getting to what they actually want and need. All right? So if they tell you, oh, that gradient is horrible, you might think it looks it's the coolest thing ever. Well, okay, then get rid of it. It's not that big a deal. Now, if they asked you to do something that didn't make sense, like put a goofy little animation of a frog jumping across the screen or something like that, that wasn't appropriate, uh, then, then maybe you would debate them and say, well, what value does that add, and so on and so forth. But if it's something simple, you could, you could take in, uh, their input and integrate it in your site. That's why it's good to have more than one prototype. What I want to show you is a site that I, I show all my classes at different points in the semester, all my web development classes, and it's a site called CSS Zen Garden. And here's what CSS Zen Garden is. CSS Zen Garden is a website that takes one web page. So all the pages on CSS Zen Garden are the identical HTML. All right? But they have different CSS files applied to them. So what they're doing is they're demonstrating just how far you can go with CSS to make the pages look differently. All right? So this is one possible layout for this. We could come up with other layouts for this. And we'll do that, all right? But there are so many things that we could do with this that you don't want to really limit your imagination. So let's go and look at CSS Zen Garden. And if we look at this, all right, let's read the page. This is, a, this is the basic default version of CSS Zen Garden. And let's look for some touch points that we'll come back to. Notice it says CSS Zen Garden, the beauty of CSS design. View all designs. A demonstration of what can be accomplished through CSS-based design. The road to enlightenment. So what is all this all about? So what is this about? Participation. And so far. So. I'm going to click on one of the designs, and this web page is the exact same web page as this one. It's just formatted differently. So when I say just about anything dealing with the appearance you can address and you can change via CSS, know that I'm not exaggerating. Just about anything you can change with CSS. Notice how CSS Zen Garden up here is written vertically instead of horizontally. You can even change the direction of the text if you want to. All right, the colors of this are obviously different than, let's open it up in another tab. The colors are different. The feel is different. This is sort of a calmer feel. All right, this is pretty bold with the colors and with the fonts and so on. And yet, it's identical content. Let's go and let's pick a, another couple. All right, here's one. Again, same content, CSS Zen Garden, CSS Zen Garden. Notice even controlling the space between the letters can be done in CSS. So that's not necessarily one of the top most common uses of CSS, but you can do it. We could, for example, stretch out Tetris going across the title if we wanted to and put a little extra space on it. All right? Here's another one, CSS Zen Garden. Identical content, it looks totally different. So, when I talk about making a second version of the prototype, I'm not talking about making small little changes, all right? I'm talking about you can radically change everything. 
You could come up with different fonts. You could come up with a different layout. <laughs> Literally anything that you can think of, just about, that deals with the appearance of the page, you can change via CSS. All right? Questions about what we've gone over so far today? All right, so let's make a different prototype. Let's make a second prototype. And here's the good news, right? We Ideally, we should not have to change the HTML at all, all right? Because the HTML, HTML should be set, all right? Now, again, it's a prototype, right? So we would have to go and finish it once we picked the design that we wanted, all right? Um, but, so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go and clone that folder. I'll call this folder prototype one. And I'm going to clone this to say prototype two. So initially it's going to look out the same, then it's going to be, end up being totally different. All right? So. Let me sketch on the board maybe what we want the prototype to look at, look like. I'll sketch out a wireframe for it. too crazy with this, but we're going to change it to look like this. Headers on the top, navigation's going down the side, the main section's here, and the footer is here. Now we're going to do this using what's called fixed positioning. Fixed positioning is where we pick a location on the page. Let me rephrase that. We're going to use absolute positioning to achieve this, not fixed positioning. Absolute positioning is where we pick a spot from the corner of the page, from the top left corner, and we specify how far to the left we want to move something and how far from the top we want to move something. So maybe the way I have this drawn, it's 10 pixels from the top and maybe it's 50 pixels from the left. So we'd actually specify to put this here, we would say position, absolute, top, 10 pixels, left, 50 pixels. This technique of absolute positioning was used a lot more in the past than it's used now. But I think it's important to cover it because there's, there's a time and place for everything, right? This, these, are, these different techniques that we have for laying out the page are tools, right? Are, are ways of doing things that you might find a situation you want to accomplish through a very intricate layout. I would suspect some of the pages on CSS End Garden use a very intricate uh, absolute positioning to get the things laying exactly where the designer wanted them to be. All right? So we're going to do that. So I'm going to start... Let's start by, now that I've cloned that site, I'm going to start like at, oops, 
I'm going to start from scratch again. I'm going to delete all the CSS and start with a fresh CSS file. Because I don't want anything left over from the old CSS file. So, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to edit this guy, and I'm going to get rid of all our wonderful work. Again, here's an interesting thing. Notice 75 lines of CSS. It's really not a lot of code. And it took a page that was very straightforward, very vanilla, and made it look pretty good at least. All right? So let's go and get rid of that. I'll save it. And we are back to square one with this. All right? So now I'm gonna, we're going to gradually start adding layout into this. And as I'm doing this, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, first get the layout right, and then I'm going to worry about things like color and font and stuff like that. So let me go in here, and I'm going to put, I'm going to put a border around things right off the bat, though, so that we can see actually where things are. So I'm going to say header... Top 10 pixels left fifty pixels position absolute. Too. And we're going to notice something a little bit goofy here. so many pixels from the left, so many pixels from the right. I didn't do any floating, which we'll talk about later, is another way to, do, to, to define a position for a website. I didn't do any positioning at all. I set the margins, so it, it said how much space between things, and I set the padding, and I set all that. But there's no positioning in that. So when there's no positioning, how is a page displayed? It's displayed one block on top of the other. All right? Bloop, 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 bloop. That's called the flow layout. With the flow layout, it just goes down the page, one block on top of the other. Now, that's the default for web pages. So the very first web page you did, they had whatever tags had on it, the flow layout was in effect. You just had one thing on top of the other. Now, when you start putting position in, all right, and you have some elements on your page that do have position, and some of the elements on the page that don't have position, defined by you in the CSS, the ones that aren't defined by you are put in the flow mode, where just one on top of the other. So, in this case, if we look at this, we've given a position to this guy, the header. We have not given a position for the nav. 
for the section, or for the footer. So what does that mean? Well, the one that we defined a position for gets put in that position. The ones that we didn't define a position for get put in the flow. So those just appear going down in the flow. So this is a temporary condition. When we add positions for the other things, they'll appear without any overlapping. But I wanted to explain to you why they're overlapping now. Notice also that once I've given a position to it, it's no longer 100% width of the screen. All right? So if I want the width, I have to define it. So I could say maybe something like width 80%. And that would be 80% of the available space that it has. So it goes across like that. So now, I want to put the navigation down. And I want to, so I'm going to go and do this, and I'm going to say the nav the top might be Let's say 130 pixels, the left 50, position absolute. Let's give this guy a green border. And the width I'm going to make 30%. So 30% of the width of the page. And let's just see what that gives us. All right. Actually, not bad. All right. It's kind of right below here. We'll leave it like that for now. All right, uh, maybe we'll change it in a bit, but we'll leave it like that for now. So, let's see. Let's change the width of 300 pixels. That'll make my life easier. Section, I'm going to say top 130. So it's going to be the same top as the navigation. Left is going to be, well, it, the left position of that one is 50 plus. I'm going to add 300. I might give a little extra space, so I'm going to say left 360 pixels. Position. Absolute. Border. Three pixel. Solid yellow. And. And what do I want? Um, with, I don't know, we'll say 60% of the available space. Let's just do this, see what it looks like. Okay, pretty much kind of where I want it, more or less. And then finally I can give a position to the footer. <clears throat> Notice how I add a position to each one of them, each one of them drops out of the flow and goes to its designated position. All right, Because now it has a position associated with it. So I could go and do this with the footer. Top will make 430 left, three, left will make 50 absolute. We'll give it a blue border. I'm picking those colors because they're all different, so I can see where the border of everything is. But also, if you think about it, for Tetris, it sort of makes sense, right? Because in Tetris, 
you have you, you know the most of colors use the simple primary colors. So using the primary colors for the border seems to make sense. All right, so looks like I put the border uh, the thing a little bit further down. Let's move it up a little bit. Maybe 360. All right. Um, we'll leave it like that for, for right now. We might want to play with it a bit. Now, sort of a limitation of this fixed, or I'm sorry, absolute, because there's something different called fixed that's similar but different. The drawback for this is this is how it's going to be laid out on any device. Uh, even a phone. And the side-by-side -side layout doesn't really look good on a phone. Now, there's ways around that. You know, there's ways around almost everything, right? You know, I mean, th there's, there's things that you can do. You can actually create a different style sheet for mobile as for desktop. Um, but, for getting a very intricate layout that you want to be very precise and all that, the fixed is sort of a way that you can go. All right? It used to be there was problems if you'd zoom a fixed layout, but they've that's sort of been taken care of. All right. But like if you're going to view this on a phone, which we could actually simulate, how do we simulate a phone? Well, we can go here. This is in the Chrome browser. More tools, developer tools, and we can tell it to pretend that it's a mobile device. And we can say it is an iPhone 6. And that's how it would look. Or it is a Nexus 6P or a Galaxy. And you see it doesn't necessarily look optimal for those devices. All right. Usually on mobile devices, you want it to be sort of like, uh, you know, one column. All right. Now, again, there's a ways around that. We'll discuss those going forward. But mobile is always a consideration for that. That being said, if you have a very intricate layout that you want to be very precise and exact, you can use a, uh, a, uh, a, a, an absolute layout. Let's go make a couple last-minute changes to these, to this. I'm going to give the body a black background because that's sort of what the screen is in Tetris. And our page then will sort of suggest our brand. If I do that, I better make these backgrounds white so that we can see the font. we can make this it look like a, a an okay page just like we did the other one we're not quite there yet but at least you sort of have an idea of of what's going on with this next time what we'll do is we'll wrap up this prototype and we'll get it looking a lot better than it looks now uh, we will also go in and um, uh, make other whip through a couple other versions of the prototype using other techniques for designing and laying out pages. Are there any questions about this? All right, we'll see you over in lab.